I'm the chairman, but our next speaker is Yatislav Spevignolov, who will speak on 6J symbols for SL2C and Feynman diagrams. Thank you, Lord. So, uh, I'm coming from uh, Dubna, the Physics Institute, uh, the place where, as they mentioned in last week, this whole speed function was computed a very long time ago. I was not working at that time there, I came substantially later. And also I have an affiliation, partial affiliation with the Department of Mathematics of the High School of Economics in Moscow. This is a newly established uh, mathematical university center, so it's necessary to mention that it's functioning and I'm partially representing it here as well. Okay, so uh, the subject of my talk is, uh, as mentioned, 3J symbols, standard uh, thing in the representation theory. I will be uh, talking about SL2C and uh, also I will mention immediately that I will be talking only about the uh, infinite dimensional unitary principle service representation, non finite dimensional representation. And uh, what some final diagrams technique will be used for dealing with that. And this is a joint work with uh, Sergei Derkashov from St. Petersburg uh, Department of uh, Siklov Mathematical Institute. And uh, so our preliminary uh, version of the paper is in archive. Uh, has some drawbacks which we slowly fix uh, in the way we, we notice uh, some problems in some small places. And I would like to mention that this is a kind of outburst of the program which Dirkachev is performing with his collaborators, uh, say, Manashov, Marinovich, uh, about the investigation of the non compact uh, X, X, X spin chain for this symmetry group. And so it's a program, a lot of papers, and our paper there is somehow no. a little a different subject attached to that associated with CJ symbols. Okay, uh, 35 years ago, I was <coughs> entered by postgraduate studies, and I was doing final diagrams, uh, these final integrals, and in a couple of years, I fell into the competition with David Broadhurst. And he spent a lot of time in the if you remember. Mm -hmm. And that was quite useful, uh, lucky for me competition, because we didn't know about their work, they were about ours, anyway, we did some things more, in more general setting that day. Uh, and during those computations, I felt it a very big frustration. I didn't like the physics involved in those computations, these were so-called uh, so uh, operating product expansions, generalizations of composite operators, uh, and the computations were, didn't give any physics thoroughly, they did fix physics. And I was unhappy with mathematics as well, because I was computing some integrals, 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 without understanding what all this is about. So I hesitated this subject and after the PG quit it. And I was, was thinking that I quit completely, forever. But here I am, now I'm talking about some story about the oh, okay. final drivers. In the very end of my talk, I will explain why I was forced to return to such type of things. Okay. Let me start from reminding certain things about this uh, group. So as usual, the two by two matrix with complex entries, such that the determinant is one, so everything is over C. And as usual, it's realized in a way. We will now think. Uh, the algebra of this group is generated by two sets of generators, never C. And the alpha is plus minus and zero, say, and the V algebra is the commutator of the plus of minus is highlighted this way, and that's not S plus minus, equals to plus minus is not uh, plus minus. Okay, this is uh, well known. And there is explicit realization of this uh, algebra on the back in the space of complex functions. And it goes as follows. S minus is derivative with respect to the complex variable z. S uh, naught is z, dz, plus s, some complex parameter, free complex parameter. And s plus is z square, dz, plus 2sz. 
And similarly, you realize uh, the second set in, this, in the same way, you're replacing by C by Z compressed punch mediated, and by replacing C as variable by another, in general, not related variable as var. Well. So these two complex variables characterize the representation, which you are willing to deal with, and um, uh, this variable is called spin, physics term. And Casimir, as usual, has S plus S minus, uh, plus S not, S not minus 1, and this S, S minus 1, some complex number. And you immediately see that the representation is characterized by such a transformation are equivalent, Casimir is the same. So these are called equivalent representations. And they play a very important role uh, in the representation theory. I will say a little bit more. And because uh, of this property, it's useful to uh, introduce the variable A, which will be not which will be 2 S plus 1. So that the equivalent transformation is just this sign change. That's why it's quite useful. And then in terms of this uh, variable, the representation is defined in, by the following transformation rule. So the, the representation is characterized by this uh, spin variable G. This is group element means acting on the uh, function of complex variables. This is given by the standard transformation rules. A minus one. <coughs> Theta is z dot plus delta is a complex conjugate a and minus one times phi alpha is z plus d gamma z is z plus delta and analogously for complex conjugate and for single loudness of this representation you have to impose the constraint that this is must be integer that's the first constraint you have to impose on this spin variable, and then it becomes single volume. If you, so let me write the first constraint. A second constraint which I would like to impose is the deleterity constraint, namely if you work with the space of variables with this color product, then this representation will be unitary if you para take, parameterize this m, a variable as this integer m over 2 plus i c, where c is now must be real. So that's exactly the representation which I would like to be working with, the unitary principle series representation. And the, uh, this equivalency relation is realized with the help of the so-called intertwining operator, which has the following job. So it's TAG. Minus a g m of a and m of a is the uh, function integral operator acting on the function i minus a minus a one divided by pi gamma of a plus a one divided by two. All this is contained in a well-known series of books by Gelfand and his school. Uh, just and of reminding you its content, a plus a bar over 2 plus a bar over 2. And wet stuff. And the action itself, so the integral of a complex plane, by x is bar. And here I introduce the notation, which will be used throughout the whole talk, a plus 1. And whenever I write z to the power a, I assume z to the power b, z conjugate to the power a bar, and this will be z to the power m, and z modulus minus m plus 2 pi sigma. That's the definition of this particular square bracket. So that's the definition of the intertwining operator, and it's 
uh, it plays a very important role, in particular it allows you, for instance, to dig out of these finite dimensional representations for very special choices of the spin variables. And uh, it plays an important role in the context of this model because it's one of the key algebraic ingredients for constructing R matrix for this XXX model, and so it's a member of the Young Master algebra. Yes, that's why it is so important. Next. Excuse Thing. me, what is the region of integration over X? Uh, it's a two dimension complex plane. No? Okay. okay, now about uh, tensoring. So why is it? The representations are equivalent. Oh, yeah, because it, I, I Cousin here is it's zero. Yes, so it doesn't change. OK. Now about the standard problem on the representation theory when you take ten products of some particular representations, they want to decompose it into the sum of irreducible representations with some coefficients. These coefficients are called Clef Gordon coefficients or 3J coefficients. I will uh, write the following. So we have the following problem. Is two. So you want to write that as a sum, but I would like to write in a slightly different way. I act by some projection operator uh, on this uh, representation, uh, which maps me into another reducible representation, T3. And I would like to realize it in the following way. So this projection acting on this function of two complex. So this now will be the uh, essentially the function of two complex variables, Z1 and Z2. Each of, in each variable, they must transform as indicated above. So it will be the representation of uh, this series with for some, its own spin. So I would like to realize it as a double integral with some coefficient, unknown coefficient, uh, 2 is 3 z1, z2, z3. And it acts on the one and the two. And I demand that this to be the reducible representation, which means that it must be transformed like that again uh, with the uh, suppose that this A1 and A2 characterize these two different spaces. And this will be, I demand that must be parameters uh, for characterizing this function. So the spin and the Complex variable. It, what does it mean? It means that under the action of the uh, susceptible Z group, this must transform as beta Z. Okay, I write this beta Z plus delta A3 minus 1 uh, times uh, projected out. And here I have uh, alpha Z3 plus gamma beta Z3 plus delta, and it must be, so this goes the same, and here I have now a cross to this representation, uh, which is beta z1 plus delta a1 minus 1, uh, beta z2 plus delta a2 minus 1, and here I have now alpha z1 plus Gamma beta zeta one plus gamma alpha zeta two plus gamma beta zeta two plus delta. That's the demand, and it appears that it's uh, sufficient to determine this coefficient completely. It was solved by this problem was solved by Neimer, but Neimer in 1957, and he published a couple of years later, and the explicit answer for this. W1, A2, A3, Z1, Z2, Z3 condition is the following one. So Z2 minus Z1 minus 1 plus Z1 plus A2 plus A3 divided by 2. Z3 minus Z1 minus 1 plus A1 minus A2 minus A3. Divided by 2 and z2 minus z3 and the power minus 1 plus a1 minus a1 
plus V2 minus V3 divided by 2. Up to some coefficient, which normalization coefficient. Uh, an unusual thing is that the powers of these uh, uh, exponentials here, uh, if you look uh, the difference them, the analog of this uh, expression, then here you will get M1 plus M2 plus M3 divided by 2. And then let's have integer for generic M1 and M2 and And the resolution is as follows. That such a representation, such a problem, has a solution only in the case when this is even, the sum of three zero. So this is a restriction on the type of representations which emerge in this problem. That's the first thing I should do. And now immediately I will write, what is this? Uh, Ten days later, the same function has been found by Alexander Polyakov. Uh, since this is a conformal triangle, it's a general expression for three-point correlation function in conformal field theory. It's the same. So that's it. And here is a diagram, final diagram, which uh, repeats uh, this object. Z1, Z3, Z2. Put it like this. Put it like this. And the indices uh, which... So D2 minus Z1 is this one. It means that this index characterizes this line. Z3 minus Z1 is this index. It sits here with the positive side, for instance. Just the one. Okay, I will say. And this is this line. And of course, uh, you do the following, the propagator, W Z, if in this case Z minus W in the power of. That's it. So this is a two-dimensional propagator. It's not scalar function because of this uh, condition on the index parameter. It's mm -hmm. more general than the scalar thing. But that's the propagator for my final rules. Mm -hmm. The conformal triangle has explicit expression and it has this. Uh, diagrammatic representation. Uh, when you flip the sign, the opposite, then you will see that it's equal to alpha minus alpha in this direction. So also easy to see from the properties of this function. And there are two rules, two final diagram rules, which are useful in this business, and these are the actual one loop diagrams, essentially. And one of the diagrams, first rule is the so-called chain rule. Everything will be in the coordinate, uh, coordinate basis, representation. So the blocks denote the integration. So this is the one, the two, and there is some intermediate uh, representation. And this is, I will write it immediately. So what does it mean? It means that I have the product of two such expressions with different uh, uh, with different exponentials, and I have here some intermediate coordinates which I integrate over. So this is the one loop diagram. And I will write immediately the diagrammatic answer for that. It will be pi of a of beta gamma times uh, this. Uh, what else? Just let me see. Mm -hmm. Minus one in the power of gamma minus gamma inverse, and it's z1, z2. That's it. And what is this? This is a alpha, a beta, a gamma, so it's a product of three expressions, and a of alpha is the what is called the gamma function for the complex uh, for the field of complex numbers, which is the ratio of two gamma functions. Mm -hmm. Gamma 1 minus alpha divided by gamma alpha. That's it. This is the chain rule. And the second rule is uh, so sometimes called uniqueness uh, relations, uh, more often the star triangle relation. So star triangle. And it, it says diagrammatically that this diagram, here's the integration law, and here are the uh, directions, indices of. Uh, Beta and gamma. I forgot to say here that alpha plus beta plus gamma equals to 2. Otherwise, we will be an extra free variable. And this guy equals to pi. Again, this function a alpha beta gamma. And again, the same constraint alpha plus beta plus gamma must be equal to 2. And he has the triangle. 
no any integration. One minus down. One minus up. One minus up. These are two bundle diagrams which are computable exactly and uh, well known expressions. Okay, so some, I will, I will describe, I'm going to describe some properties of this conformal triangle, triangle uh, function or Clef Gordon coefficient. Particularly using this fine diagram technique, it's easy to uh, derive the orthogonality relation for <coughs> these functions. They are very, very non trivial, but very useful. And they show exactly how to invert the expressions evolving 3J symbols using the, this orthogonality relation. Let us, uh, for unitary principal series representations, there is a nice relation which says that complex conjugation is essentially equivalent to change to the transition to equivalent representations. This is important and useful. And I would like to derive before we to compute first the following expression minus a1 minus a2 minus a3 z1 z2 z prime z3 prime i put here epsilon we will explain what for one a2 a3 z1 z2 z3 and this diagrammatically means the following. So you have the left triangle and the right triangle. And this piece will be this triangle, conformal triangle. Here you have Z1 and Z2, so they are blocks, the integrate all of them. And here you have Z3 prime and Z3. I do not draw the line directions for the moment. It's uh, clear from the previous definition. How to write them? But I would like to indicate what this epsilon does. It's a regularization of this diagram because without this epsilon, it will be formal expression. So it goes like this. 1 minus a1 plus a2 plus a3 prime divided by 2. So this looks the same with the opposite sides of uh, these parameters. But I would like to add also some epsilon plus a3 divided by 2 minus epsilon. So 0, 0. Small positive number. 1 plus a1 minus a2 plus a3 prime divided by 2. So here it will be 1 minus a1 plus a2 minus a3 divided by 2 plus a7. Here I have 1 minus a1 minus a2 minus a3 prime over 2 in the direction is this one. This direction also the same, but I realized one plus a1. Plus a2 plus a3 divided by 2 minus epsilon. And the direction is this one and this one, I believe. Yes. So that's uh, straightforward using this final diagram technique to write this diagram, and this is computable. And it's computable, let me compute, uh, show how you compute it. Excuse me, the left hand side of your equation doesn't involve epsilon on the right hand side. Oh, no, 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 sorry. This is what you want to evaluate. Yes, yes, that's what I want to evaluate. Only this answer. I added this term. This needed in order to have final answer. 
Then I will take epsilon close to zero, and I will get generalized function, no functions. Actually. And that will be my uh, intermediate expression. So this is computable now. Easy to see these two multiply p1 propagator. You have to add these two things. Then you apply. Um, uh, then you apply to this resulting vertex this star triangle transformation. So this goes to this diagram. I will not. Do that. <coughs> this goes to this diagram. Yeah. You apply here the star triangle yeah. transformation. Yeah. This now flip, you get this diagram. This is chain rule. It goes to, and this is just the property. Okay. So here you go. You just multiply, keep multiplying these factors, and you compute it explicitly. And as a result, this is very much what earlier was doing. Uh, last week when he started about several of computations, we just picture, 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 and the no computation, and immediately write down the final answer. And the final answer, I won't uh, be given an explicit expression, it involves this A functions, and in particular it has A to epsilon function, and using looking here, you see that it, it tends to vanish when epsilon goes to zero. However, it doesn't vanish in two very special cases, namely when a plus minus a3. When either any of these conditions is satisfied, then you have trouble with 0 divided by 0, and so you have to resolve it, and that leads to the uh, careful analysis uh, expressions like this. You use the rules like this, which uh, is the rule dealing with zero life functions. And as a result, for epsilon goes to zero, you can write the final answer. And the final answer has the following form. It's delta. I will write it. It just follows a minus 3 a3 prime right? times delta z3 minus, this is two dimensional, z minus z. 3 prime divided by some function rho of a3 plus some d function e1, e2, e3. These are explicit functions, uh, well known, and this well, a plus a3 prime divided by z3 minus z3 prime uh, 1 minus a3. And what are these? That there are a minus a prime is delta m m prime delta function sigma minus sigma prime in terms of these representation parameters. You have these parameters are characterized by integer and some continuous variable. That's the definition of this representation depending delta function of parameters. And this uh, this is standard uh, derived delta function. So This is the first use of this final diagrams technique for computing something useful with these conformal primates. We try to apply it uh, for uh, getting the completeness relation, but very unfortunately, we have some trouble. Everything works up to the factor one half. Sorry, but uh, cannot trace where we could have lost the one half. So. To deal with the completeness, we still have the construction and it has the following form the completeness relation for these conformal triangle functions. And uh, of course, completeness and orthogonality are very fundamentally important. And they must not contradict to each other, which is exactly the case if somehow we manage to restore this one factor in our computations. But in the work of Neymark, it has been shown that it has the following expression.
throw of A over 2, and then the right of the throw of A. I will be followed by 4. Yes. And I will not write this. This is a combination of uh, uh, some gamma functions. And this is a specific function, and in terms of the representation variables, it's positive as easy to see. It's a measure. Okay, and here is the completeness expression. Z3, Z4, Z, W, V1, A, Z1, Z2, Z, equals to, so integral over Z, and also over the representation uh, variables A. And just two delta functions, Z1, Z2, Z2 minus Z4. And remember, there are some constraints on the integer variables involving into this. The sum must be even. It means that actually we have two such uh, completeness relations. Either M belongs to Z, it's separate relation, or it belongs to Z plus 1. It will be separate relation because each of them split the space of representations into two classes. Okay. That's it. These are two very important relations for the control triangle. Now I'm coming to the main subject, to the main problem of computations of six J systems using these results, these expressions. And the, problem, the task is now to, to describe the following situation. So we have three representations. And I work with the projectors. You project, say, first these two variables, then you will get with the first projector, so you will get <coughs> TC times TA, TV3. And then with the second projector, you go to TL. So this is basically. But you can do it in the opposite direction. First, you can. Uh, say it's P3, another projector, and then we get T A1 times T C, and then T L again. So the final will have the same level. So two different ways of decomposing of this triple tensor product into uh, sums of uh, projecting out on the one and the same irreducible representations, and here's the definition of 6G symbols. It's the coefficient which connects the, the result of this uh, projection with the result of this projection. And formally you can write it in the following way. In this projection depending on CL, CA, 2, A, 3, C. So it's, I believe, this one equals to integral of the representation parameter uh, C prime, rho of C prime over 2. Here is this coefficient which one has to find. This is the measure, which is known. C, C prime, and times now P, C prime, D3, L, P, A1, A2, C prime. And this is sum of m c prime and integral over d sigma this c prime variable. So it's a measure associated with these parameters. And this is the formula in the projection form, but in terms of these w coefficients, we come to the integral equation. That's the point. We have the integral equation of the form d2 z0 w a2 a3c z2 z3 z0 w a1cl z1 z0 z equals to integral this on the dc prime from c prime or two unknown coefficient which we are looking for and integral over d to z0, w, 
Ramonion a one a two c prime is the one is the two is the not times double c prime a three l is the not is the three z that's the definition of this coefficient and we have to solve this integral equation and it's easy to uh, it's relevant to analyze it in the following way this is the following final diagram and this is the following final diagram and you map one onto another using this integral operator let me write the table more explicitly Like a formula for a conformal blocks transform. Yes, in a sense, because it's a conformal blocks, and you map one to another that will be by integral transformation. That's true. So can you do it by using the formulas for the conformal blocks and doing some? Oh, uh, it's much easier. You need only this uh, orthogonality and uh, uh, completeness. That's enough. Uh, so z one z z. Two is three, and here is zero. And zero is over here. Zero is here. And z is three. Z one, z two. I'm not drawing exact direction of lines. So it's uh, you can do it. It's a technical. So that's the thing we have to deal with. And it's not easy. You just use this orthogonality relation. You multiply this uh, this relation by this uh, conjugated conformal triangle and integrate over variables z1 and z2. And that gives you. So you multiply this guy by w minus a1 minus a2 minus c prime, z1, z2. Z3 prime. And integrate the result over Z. Z1, Z2, Z2. So we have three people now integral. And using the orthogonality relations, this and this they will cancel out. And there will remain only you actually already did the job. Okay, I have to use the this. Doing that, you come to the following. Uh, so this guy equals to our L C C prime W L is not Z three Z. So. You have already obtained the, the expression for the coefficients of interest in terms of some triple integral involving these conformal triangles, but you have some coefficient, highly non trivial coefficient. Uh, not highly, but not trivial. And here you now use uh, some simplifications. You can use some simplification. This guy doesn't depend on coordinates, so you can take them to infinity, whatever you want. Then this uh, shrinks to the propagators. This shrinks to the propagates. And this also simplify. And then you essentially what you have, uh, this result of the product of these, these three things has the following diagrammatic representation. It's the following diagram. One, two, three vertices, z three prime, z and z three. Z2, Z1. These are integrated. By conformal symmetry, it must be proportional to this triangle diagram, which represents this guy, because it's three point function. And the coefficient is exactly the one which we are interested in. 
And now by taking uh, these, the diagram, this or this to the infinity, we essentially remove these pieces of the diagram, and then we get two point functions. And these two point functions, uh, uh, so whenever some z3, z3 prime, or z goes to infinity, this guy goes to essentially some kind of coefficient of interest times the propagator. We can do it in different ways. This will be the different diagrams, and all this yields uh, the same result. So different diagrams give the same result, which means that we have actual symmetry transformations of the object. And the point is that, uh, of such various possibilities to get uh, one and the same answer from different diagrams is uh, the following trick. Again, uh, similar to what Oliver was describing, uh, you can transform this three-point integral to the one-point integral, essentially to the um, to the vacuum diagram. Namely, you can, for instance, uh, or better not this one to, to work it with, but to okay, to do it in a different way. So let's pull this z three, no, this z to infinity. And then this will give me the this diagram, two-point diagram. Which is proportional to the propagator with some power connecting these two points. And the coefficient is also easily found from this expression to be given again. Uh, it's coefficient and is given by this equality, value of this integral. And the trick is that if if you multiply by extra time, say line, and say integrate here as well, then it will be the vacuum diagram. And uh, if you do it 1 minus a3 for this particular comp computation, or two plus some small uh, complex variable, then this will be, will be if to follow exact normalization conditions, this will be two pi square R L C C prime delta of x. So what your diagrams do not vanish, they you generalize functions. And there was the work by Garishni yes. uh, and Sarev in uh, 85, where they noticed that uh, dealing with the vacuum diagrams, you don't, usually the, the dimensional regularization, people write like this, but it should be always written that it's not a half of dimension, and for half of dimension, you have additional requirement to regularize it, and you can do it through the mapping the result to the data function. I have to say that he said that it's well known. Right. And you can use this trick in order to find the symmetries of your diagram. So essentially any diagram which is obtained from this diagram by cutting any of the lines will give the same answer. That's a trick which these guys proposed and actually Garishni who is one of my, one of my first co-author. I found a, a, a symmetry group of dimension 1,440 using them. Yeah, but they generalize the particular diagrams, but we use this trick for this particular diagram in order to compute it in a different way. So you can cut any of these particular lines, and the choice which uh, we have taken, namely, we cut this line. And it becomes now a diagram of this now. We we'll cut this, this, and we have this diagram. And it gives again the same answer, the same answer up to this uh, well, instead of that function, now we have some propagator connecting these two points, but the coefficient will be the same. Why we did that? Because it gave the result which goes to the work done by by Sismagilov in the theory of representations of the SF2C group. Uh, he was computing these six H symbols using these operator methods and kind of obtained some result. So if, for this particular diagram. We obtain the expression which looks similar to his results. And here's the final answer. Oops, this doesn't work. I read the final answer for this CVJ symbol. 
So the work of Ismagilov is was published in 2007 in the Russian Journal of Functional Analysis and its Applications. Uh, no, no, this was mathematical uh, collections, uh, math born. And uh, it was, I have known it very recently only, a year and a half ago. And uh, it, it is not well known to people, but nevertheless, this uh, contains a fundamental result of CJ symbols for SRTCR fundamental objects. And we rederive this result using this fine diagram technique. Here is the answer. Symbolically. So essentially, this are integrals all of those three vertices which were appearing. Uh, the particular choice of the coordinates in the propagators correspond to the uh, choice when you kill the propagator part. Essentially, 1 over z minus y in some power becomes equal to 1. That's why I choose 1 of the coordinates 1, another 0, and then it is gone, and I get purely this Raka coefficient. OK, minus 1, minus 2, plus. C prime over 2 minus y oh, 1 plus a1 minus a2 plus c prime over 2 divided by z minus y 1 minus a3 minus l plus x prime divided by 2 and phi 2 is some prime factor z this looks rather technical, but uh, if you go to the melin bars representation of these expressions, then it will become a little bit more elusive and shows the connection to the standard <coughs> generalized epigenetic functions. Or minus z naught divided by n of 1 minus plus a2 minus a3 minus c of 2 z. 1 minus z, 1 minus a2 plus a3 minus c o2. That's the final answer for this uh, Raka coefficient and its triple integral or complex plane, some indices. Uh, there are two differences with Ismagilov's answer. He got similar expression, not exactly this one, but it can transform to this type of expression. Uh, first correction is that he was always assuming uh, that his integer parameters of this a, par a variables was even, in, we do not uh, restrict to that. And the second constraint is that our answer differs from his answer by this transformation to the equivalent representations. This is our answer, it's right here, and his expression is essentially in the place of has minus signs. We communicate it with him. Ask him to clarify who is right, we or he. He didn't answer uh, affirmatively to this question, but he said that he will be not surprised if his paper contains a mistake. So essentially, we may kind of pretend that uh, this is the correct answer. It still needs to be somehow re-verified, but in these two instances, we have different answers from this menu. Now, uh, that's the final result, and as you see, it's obtained using the finite integrals technique uh, more or less easily, in a straightforward way. For people working with spiral diagrams, it's not a big deal at all. You have to just know what you want to get and how to get it. That's it. And finally, the million bars representation. So the million bars representation is such a thing. So you can rewrite the final diagram for this particular <coughs> uh, integral for this expression in the following form. So three integrals are here. This is y, z, z0, z1 equals to 1, z2 equals to 0. That was the choice. 
and some particular choice of the indices which are explicitly known and I will not dry, draw them that's the diagram which essentially is coinciding with this expression and so here are three blocks integration to get the million bars representation one needs to use uh, the following representation for the propagators and it goes approximately like that this is the last exact formula which uh, is needed for dealing with this. It gives you the separation of variables in a sense for the propagator. Z minus y to the power of equals a alpha divided by 2 pi. This or m and now this sigma. And this function a 1 minus alpha over 2 minus s. S is m over 2 plus pi sigma divided by a alpha square minus s 1 over y alpha plus s z alpha minus s alpha is the representation parameter you see you have here the difference and mm -hmm. here you have the separation of these two coordinates that's it you plug in mm -hmm. say this guy for this for this propagator you Essentially means you kill this line because it is separate now. You have uh, infinite. You have infinite sum of integrals of this type, but then the whole diagram is computable yeah. because you now again use the chain rules and whole diagram becomes computable. And then when you get uh, the final expression, the final expression will be having the following form. So I will write essentially the proportionality. So this sum of m rather than this sigma. And here has the a1 plus a2 minus a3 plus c or 2 plus s. So this is million bars now. Because the integration goes, uh, this s variable contains complex variable here. And here is the real line of uh, integration. And so it's essentially the complex line, and it's million bars. And these are four terms, depending on this representation. 1 plus a2 plus a3 plus c divided over 2 plus s. Then goes another fourth factor, 1 minus a1 minus l minus plus c over 2 plus s. This is the in the numerator. And the in the denominator is simpler, <coughs> s. C plus S, A2 plus C, minus L, minus C prime, divided by 2 plus S, and A2 plus C minus L plus C prime, or 2 plus S. That's it. This is the final answer. It has a million bars. So it's infinite bilateral sum of million bars integrals. Uh, Ispagilov has shown that uh, you can train this, uh, compute these things. You close up the contour at the infinity by after some organization, and then this is nothing else than the sum of 4, 4 F3 times 4 F3 functions. These different arguments. And that's, that, that's the result that was obtained in right to the fourth theory by Julia Reggie that I was telling you yeah, about. Yeah. So it's, it just mentioned that uh, how, where it goes on. So it's, uh, so essentially, do you have this answer for these CJ symbols as a sum of um, yes. two, two, four, or three functions? And why do you get this in not only one uh, infinite sum? Uh, because you have infinitely many poles involved into the. You have double. Yeah, but I mean, this is usually a sum, but not a product. Uh, it will be the product because they factorize this. It's, it's a computation. It's, uh, it will be the sum of the products of two or three functions with different arguments. Okay. Okay. And, and do, are you sure that uh, you cannot reduce these four F3 functions to some uh, more elementary functions? No, this is general. This is general. So I don't know how much time I have. I have started to the lead. I guess I have still some five minutes. Okay. I didn't look at my watch from this slide. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's not reducible to uh, simpler functions, 
Because uh, already uh, Raka, the name Raka says that it's not possible. <laughs> uh, Raka in 44 computed these six G symbols for five dimensional representations for SU2. Yes. And he got exactly four three okay. F43 yes. functions yes. as the representation. And these uh, four F3 functions he has derived, they are famous actually, because they define the uh, new, at that time, a set of orthogonal polynomials or being classical properties similar to the Jacobi polynomials. So this, this is truncating for F3 functions? Or? Uh, in the case of Raka, yes, but in this case, it's, these are not yes, yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. This were terminating yours or not? Yeah, this were terminating in Raka case. This is not terminating. Okay. Okay. Yeah, all other parameters. This is the question. Here is the draft, uh, the picture of the set. Of, so this is the Gauss, or I would bet, bet say Jacobi orthogonal polynomials, and the measure is beta function, Kevlar. Well, no, no. Three and two was done by Chemyshev and Han. No, we, we know all that. But then the question is, which parameters has this particular four F three? This one? Yeah. yeah. Ah, we, they are defined by oh, the this is, so combinations so of these. Just the first combinations okay. of these functions. Yes. Yeah. And it's a series, it's not a, it's not a function. It's so yeah, here, yeah. here comes the Raka polynomial case and in this yeah. uh, continuous series representation case, it was done by Wilson. Uh, here is the Rogers, uh, which is Good. Uh, 8th of 80th century. It's a pure analog of uh, Jacobi polynomials and uh, so well, very old object. Here ha has uh, Han polynomials. Here have Chebyshev of Han. Chebyshev was the first, but, uh, but continuous series was considered by the Han. And then goes the 4 of 3 function. These are ASCII Wilson polynomials. And this is the top level of orthogonal polynomials, so being classical uh, properties, which means that you satisfy both the term cancellations and find different equations for the uh, arguments. This is not all. So where are these guidelines? All this was done for real case, say SL2R, real form. Because uh, all the measure was lying on the cup and so on and so on. So this was real one. This goes now to the complex, uh, complexification of these things, when the measures become complex. And this guy lives at this level. So essentially what I expect, what we expect is that these functions determine the continuous series type analogs or the essentially complexification of the Wilson functions. Wilson functions. That's what is expected for this guy. But this is not the whole story. Now I come to the end of my talk, why I became interested in this subject. Because you have to abandon orthogonal polynomials. You have to go to now, instead of polynomials, to rational functions. As soon as you do this, rational functions, you go to very well poised F9A series and the Rahman Nielsen orthogonal, by orthogonal rational functions. And it goes again at the Q level, sorry, no, this, at the Q level it goes to this, it's also Rachmanov's. The difference between this and this is very simple. You replace Pohammer symbols by uh, Q Pohammer symbols. That's the Q deformation. And uh, now, this is not the end of the story, there is a completely new line associated with elliptic curves. Namely, you can generalize these functions to the biorthogonal rational functions, defined in terms of elliptic functions, and you get, instead of now this indices, this guy, and this guy is obtained from this essentially by replacing this, uh, saying, interpreting this, uh, so this was A, A plus one uh, a a plus n minus one. That was the standard parameter, this q parameter. In this case, you have to replace this by theta function of a sub uh, theta function mu a plus one, and so on. Theta function of mu the mu is arbitrary scale, and theta one one is standard theta function of Jacobi a plus n minus one. So you get some terminating series of you know, out of elliptic functions and these are orthogonal functions for some particular objects. And here, this seems to be, is believed to be the top level. Uh, in the discrete case, it was done by Jadanov and myself uh, in 99. And the continuous case I did 
uh, into some loop. And what is this? This is a discrete analog of the elliptic analog of the Gauss Euler Gauss half geometric function. So essentially what I want to say is the following thing. This guy is embedded into the elliptic analog of the Euler Gauss half geometric function, which I now describe. And it will be the end of the It is not appropriate, but that's a very natural process. And that will show you the top level function which emerges in this, uh, it, it is, has been constructed until now at uh, this row of CG symbols. It has some nice applications. And I will mention the most interesting one for this audience. It want to feel favor. So what we want to say uh, to show is the fact that that function is a special limiting case of the following function. Integration over unit circle with a positive direction. Yes. Okay, it equals to p square q square and gamma of z p q equals to double infinite product one minus z inverse p j plus one q a plus one divided by one minus z p in the j q in the k gk from zero to infinity. This is the elliptic gamma function, what is called the elliptic gamma function. This is the elliptic analog of the Euler Gauss cartogenetic functions. It's five second order difference equation of the second order with elliptic coefficients. And there are some changes of dissonances which are expected to lead to that CJ symbol. This is an elliptic CJ symbol. The surprise is the following this guy was constructed using this SF2R line of thoughts as a elliptical work of CG symbols for this group. And I was interested in how to deal with the complexification of these things. And it happened that when you complexify at the very bottom, it's a 2C level, then it suddenly it appears to be embeddable into this guy. So some mystery is in behind and This is actually what shown these hints are derived by uh, Sergei Zirkachev, Manashov, and Malinievich group, as I mentioned. But uh, still, we now completely rigorous uh, consideration of the embedding. But the point is that it looks like this function emerges in the top level of this uh, line of this a line of a line of thoughts. And what is this? This is top level currently the uh, type of cartogenetic function. But it appeared already in quantum field theory later after the discovery. It describes the so-called supersymmetric partition function, and this is the exact answer. This is not perturbative. This is path integral, four dimensional path integral for the so called super conformal limits. You take the four dimensional theory and it was supersymmetric theory with gauge group SU2 color, with the flavor group SU8. And uh, in the simplest uh, representation, well, it's a set of fields, compute the trace over Hilbert space of this guy where the terminal number is in this or some particular exponential of, uh, say, CIs, some operating eyes. These are maximal cartan, cartan of uh, your theory uh, algebra. Preserving one supersymmetry. Preserve one student. As soon as you put inside, compute this guy, you come to this expression. So it emerges as the non perturbative answer for very important quantum field theoretical mm -hmm. objects. Mm -hmm. Whether it appears in quantum field theory perturbative, that's not clear yet. But that's <coughs> what, at least the, the guy I just computed is sit, must be sitting inside this object. There are some speculations about uh, what you can say about these functions in more abstract level, but I stop here. It's enough. Thank you. So, thank you. about questions because there's supposed to be a reception. I gave 15 minutes ago, maybe we should ask the questions over, over. over.
Drinks. There are drinks. Food if there is food. So you gave us food for thought. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>